Are you confused about what solar panels you should buy for your solar generator? Are you sure you know how to keep your system safe and sustainable? I want to teach you two steps that will help you understand what factors you should consider and hopefully at the end you will have a clear idea of what solar panels you should get. So let's talk about how to choose that right solar panel for your system. Step one, find your voltage. It all begins with your power station, which is sometimes called a solar generator. Every solar generator has a range of solar input it can use. Too low, and the unit will not charge. Too high, and you can fry the electronics inside. So you want to use a panel or set of panels that fits into that range. The most important number in your panel specs for safety is the open circuit voltage. The open circuit voltage is the maximum voltage that panel can produce. You need to make sure that the voltage is above the minimum level and below the maximum input level for your solar generators. Now I have a Mega 1 and a B2 battery and both have solar inputs. The Mega 1 has a minimum of 12 volts needed to charge and can take up to 78 volts. The B2 can take a little more solar input with a minimum of 18 volts and a maximum input of 140 volts. The Opus 240 watt portable panel has an open circuit voltage of 24.6 volts. So that panel is compatible with both the Mega One and the B2 battery. 24.6 volts is above the minimum voltage and below the maximum. I also have an 800 watt rigid panel solar array. Now each of these four 200 watt panels has an open circuit voltage of 36.5 volts, so a little higher. Any one of the panels will work. I currently have four panels wired in a way that provides 73 volts and 13.72 amps. This configuration allows me to stay under the 78 volt max of the Mega One and the 140 volt max of the B2. The 13.7 amps of current is also under the maximum current that the power stations can use. In addition to voltage, the other two important specs on a solar panel are the amperage and the wattage. These are important to maximize efficiency. My Mega One maxes out at 800 watts of input, while the B2 Extra battery maxes out at 2100 watts of input. Though it's not efficient, you could have panels charging either of those two power stations that produce more than their maximum rated input wattage if they're within the voltage range. The solar generator just will not charge at that higher wattage, so any extra watts of input are wasted. Step 2. Maximizing your efficiency. Once you know your power station's voltage range, we can look at how to get the most solar power from your panels. We want the most efficient panel configuration possible as it relates to your solar generator. Now this often comes down to how you wire your solar panels together. There are three ways to connect them, series, parallel, or a series parallel combination. Series connections tie the panels together by connecting the positive and negative leads from each panel in one big series of connections. Parallel connections tie the positive leads together and negative leads together into a Y connection using connectors just like these. A series parallel connection wires multiple strings of series connections together in parallel. Wiring panels in series will increase the voltage. Wiring panels in parallel will increase the amps. So if I take two 240 watt panels and wire them in series, then I will be sending up to 480 watts at a maximum of 49.2 volts. So if I had, say, an Exodus 1500, which could take 480 watts at 30 volts of maximum solar input, you would not want to wire two 240 watts of panels in series because the input voltage would exceed the 1500. However, if I were to wire those same 240 watt panels in parallel, the voltage would stay the same and the amps would double to 24.6. Now the Exodus 1500 can take 480 watts up to 25 amps of power. You can safely and efficiently use two 240 watt panels in parallel with the 1500. But the Exodus 2400 can take up to 78 volts of solar input. So to get the most efficient input from two 240 watt panels, you'd want to wire them in series. And since the 2400 has an input max of 13 amps, wiring the panels in parallel would actually exceed the amps and waste that power. You could actually use three 240 watt panels wired in series for a voltage of 73.8 volts, which is less than the maximum input of 78 volts. So that would be a potential of 720 watts of solar input from those three panels. So that's how you choose your maximum panels, considering maximum voltage and maximum efficiency. Now we just need to connect them. Most solar panels have an MC4 connection, but some have different plugs like a DC7909 or maybe even a USB-C. Whichever plug your panel has, you'll just need to make sure it connects to your power station. Opus power stations generally either have a DC7909 input or an Anderson plug. 
Most come with a cable to adapt an MC4 connection to that input. Now, word of warning, don't always assume that a red colored wire is always positive. You're gonna to wanna to trace your cables as you go and make sure the polarity is correct. And if you're wiring several panels together, you should test the voltage out of the panels before hooking them up the first time. That way you won't accidentally put too much voltage into your power station. So we've looked at voltage, amps, wiring options, and connections. So you're ready to find a panel that's right for your needs. But there's one more quick consideration. You're gonna find both portable panels and rigid panels. Rigid panels are often less expensive, but as you would imagine, they are not easy to move around and set up. While portable panels can cost more, but they can quickly be set up in various locations. I have both a rigid panel array which feeds my power stations and my manual transfer switch, and a few portable panels which I take with me when camping or if I need a quick charge, or to just charge at a lower voltage than my rigid array outputs. My rigid panels stay set up and they're available to charge and recharge my home backup system and allow for me to shift some of my electrical load to solar power throughout the day. Now finally, let's talk briefly about maintenance. How do you keep your panels clean and producing? Now the texture of portable panels and rigid panels will be different. For portable panels, most people recommend a microfiber cloth or maybe even a Swiffer sweeper to get the dust and the dirt off. Rigid panels are normally covered in glass and you could use something like a microfiber cloth to clean them. You can also spray them with water, but just make sure that water is pure and not what we would call hard water so there aren't any mineral deposits left that you know might build up. Don't use any sort of chemical on any solar panel to clean them. I hope this video has helped you understand more about solar panels and how to use them with your power station. I'm Scott, I'm a fan of Opus Solar Generators. I've done a lot of testing of Exodus and the Mega One over on my own channel, at Scott Link Media, which is linked in the description. If you like this video, go ahead and give it a thumbs up, and if you wanna see more videos like it, make sure you subscribe, and I'll see you on the next one.